To understand the Western vampire legend, we need to head to the area of Central Europe, where the vampire stories began. In the country known as Romania. Romania is the largest of the Balkan countries, and is composed of several different regions. But the two of most interest to the vampire myths, are the regions of Wallachia, and Transylvania. These two regions, along with Bulgaria, are where the vampire legends we are most familiar with, had its origins. The modern era vampire, always looking for some poor soul to put the bite on, is much different than the vampire that first originated in Eastern Europe, in the country of Bulgaria, about a thousand years ago. Their vampire was a legend kept only to the Slavic people. And the original meaning of the word vampire translates as ghost monster. These early creatures were described as being like a poltergeist, having no physical body. And they were the blame for the misfortunes that would ravage a community, such as spreading diseases like the Black Death. So in a sense, these ghostly apparitions operated more like the common rat, than the supernatural being we think of today. Eventually the stories of the ghostly Bulgarian vampires, made their way to Western European countries. As war ravaged Europe, Western soldiers would hear the stories told by those they captured, and once returning home, shared their adventures and the pagan myths to their friends and family. It wasn't long before the Bulgarian vampire legend, had became established in places like France and England, and was about to get a long due overhaul. Instead of being just a ghostly figure, the creature now assumed a physical body and were cursed to walk the earth as the undead. And instead of bringing death by disease, death from a vampire now came from their bite as they drained their victim of blood. They were solely creatures of the night and exposure to sunlight, even for an instant, would mean death for them. And as unholy creatures, Vampires always shunned away from religious artifacts, such as crosses and holy water. So the ghostly vampires of Bulgaria, were now replaced with the physical embodiment of evil. And being undead predators of society, they could shape-shift themselves into animal form, to further aid in hunting down their human prey. When we hear the name Dracula, for many fans of the horror genre, it conjures up images of the best-known vampire story by writer Bram Stoker. But for centuries, the name was better known for the ruler of a region of modern Romania, known as Wallachia. Vlad III was born in 1431, in a Transylvanian village where his father at the time was living. His father was known as Vlad Dracul, and this name was given to him to symbolize he belonged to the knighthood, called the Order of the Dragon. And Dracul is a word derived from the Latin name for dragon. And the name Dracula, is just the Slavonic genitive form of Dracul, meaning the son of Dracul. So there did exist a real Dracula, just not the blood-sucking one. Every good story needs an antagonist, and with Vlad Dracula, the enemy would take the shape of the Ottoman Empire. In 1453, they had defeated the mighty empire of Byzantine. The Byzantine Empire, also referred to as the Eastern Roman Empire, was the continuation of the Roman Empire centered in Constantinople. 
For a thousand years, the Byzantine Empire was the world's great power. And they just got defeated by he new kid on the block. The Ottoman Empire. It was one of the largest and most long-lasting empires in world history. At its greatest extent, the empire extended to three continents. And they now had set their sights on Wallachia, and its ruler, Vlad Dracula. The year was 1462, and the Ottoman Empire had assembled an army of a quarter million men, which far outnumbered the size of Dracula's army, by about 10 to 1. But the Turkish army didn't count on the fierceness and cruelty of the enemy. When the invading army advanced toward the city stronghold, they were greeted with some 20,000 impaled comrades. This display showed the Turks they were up against someone quite different than the Romans of the Byzantine Empire. And in the end, the victory went to the Prince of Wallachia, now known as Vlad, the Impaler. Transylvania gave us the old vampire myths. And in its past, they also had a person that's name, brought fear to the hearts of many Europeans. It was a marriage made in heaven, or in this case in hell, just waiting for someone to put them together. And that someone, was Bram Stoker. He was looking to create the perfect horror story, and his research led him to Transylvania, where he became intrigued with the old vampire legends. He wanted his vampire to epitomize pure evil, and the name of Dracula already had that distinction, so it was a perfect fit. And the rest is horror history. The story of Dracula, the modern age vampire.